Hello, and welcome to Good Grief, the podcast dedicated to demystifying and destigmatizing grief with compassion and humor. I'm Nikki, I'm an end of life doula and a grief coach in Columbus, Ohio. And today we're going to be talking about gratitude without the guilt. What does that mean? <laughs> well, you may hear a lot of people talk about gratitude and how gratitude affects your mood, affects your life, affects your outlook, really affects just about everything. But a lot of times, especially when it comes to grief and grieving, when you start feeling gratitude or start feeling happier thoughts, along with that might come guilt. There might be a little bit of guilt associated with with that. I know at times when my brother passed away, I've I've been open about the fact that there was a sense of relief and there was also a sense of guilt with that because how dare I be relieved? My brother's dead. And you might feel something very similar when you've experienced a loss and you have a really happy day or joyful day or you feel gratitude for something, anything, whether it's related to the death or not. And you might feel guilt with that. Like you shouldn't feel these happy things because you should be grieving. You should be mourning. Well, first and foremost, before we get into anything, you are absolutely allowed to feel happy, you're allowed to feel joy, you're allowed to feel relief, and you're allowed to have gratitude. You're allowed to feel whatever the heck you want, guys. How many times do I say that? You say at the end of every episode that your feelings are valid and that your grief is yours. And it is, your grief is yours 100%. And however you're feeling about it, however you're reacting to it, is okay, okay? Awesome. <laughs> so let's talk about gratitude just a little bit. There are ways of finding gratefulness or gratitude within grief, and there's a way to practice gratitude. But before we do that at all, let's talk about gratitude and the brain. What, what's happening there? Why, does, why do so many people and so many quote unquote experts <laughs> or people you see on the internet talk about practicing daily gratitude and how it can change your entire outlook on life. Now, I will fully admit, I struggle with this a lot. Now, I also have a history with some mental illness. And a lot of times positive thinking <laughs> is not, not going to be the first thing I go to. Uh, I hate to say that, but it's, it's very true. Sometimes I get in a negative thinking spiral, and it's really hard to get out of it. Okay. And I also really struggle with upkeeping a gratitude journal. We'll talk about those a little bit down the road too, but everybody talks about gratitude journals and, you know, having gratitude every single day and it'll change your, your whole world. <laughs> it'll make everything better, right? Okay. No, <laughs> it's not going to cure everything, but it can help. So why, why is that though? What is it? What's happening with gratitude and practicing it every day? That's keeping your brains in such a happy place. Well, one thing about negative versus positive thinking is, and I'm not gonna, I'm not here to tell you what thinking is negative and what thinking is positive. It's different for everybody, okay? But in general terms, when you start with a negative mindset, it'll just perpetuate on itself, and it'll lead to more and more and more negative thinking and more and more negativity, because with those mindsets, if that's how you're thinking about everything, then it's gonna affect everything, like. My life is so hard because I hate my job. And you just, all the time, my life is so hard because I hate my job. My life is so hard because I hate my job. I hate my job because I'm stuck in it. I'm not, I can't do anything else. I'm bad at cooking too. Like it just kind of perpetuates on itself. And the same thing can go with positive thinking. I'm not going to say just thinking positive will make you think happy all the time <laughs> or vice versa. Okay, so there was a study in 2008 and yes, Ladies and gentlemen, I will link you to the study. <laughs> I read through it a bit. It doesn't seem too skewed. And, you know, there's a lot lot to, lot going into reading medical research. So, but the basic of this, there was a study that measures brain activity of people when they are feeling gratitude or thinking about gratitude or thinking grateful thoughts, things like that. So it, it's, it was lighting up the reward pathways in your brain. Like when you get something, you know what I mean by reward and the hypothalamus. So basically thinking these happy thoughts will boost neurotransmitter serotonin, which we all know serotonin's what kind of makes us happy. It's what we get from the sun, but it activates uh, this 
the brainstem to produce dopamine. Dopamine's good. We like dopamine. It makes us happy. It's our pleasure chemical. So the more we think positive and have grateful thoughts, the happier we'll feel. So that's, and I, like I said, I'll link to the study. It's very long, wordy, and a little boring, but <laughs> it's at least interesting and, you know, says exactly what I just said. You know, these, the, the thoughts of gratitude and led to happier thoughts and happier thoughts lead to dopamine which is the chemical that makes us happy, happy, happy. <laughs> okay. So what can we do to find any type of happiness or gratitude when we're grieving? So this is the hard part, right? Because when you get yourself into that negative thinking spiral that I was talking about, it's really hard to get out of it. And even if you know, if you know, no, no, like I need to be grateful for something right now to help trigger my brain to make these happy, happy chemicals <laughs> make me feel better. But it's still hard to do that because everything is so devastating to you at this moment. So I will share some things anecdotally that I can think of off the top of my head when I had to put my beautiful cat down, which you have talked about her many times on this podcast. She, I had her pretty much my entire adult life and she was my best friend and my soulmate. And l having her leave my life was very difficult, but I definitely had gratitude in those moments. I was able to, because, you know, euthanasia is okay for pets, Apparently not for people unless you live in specific states, but that's neither here nor there. I was able to schedule the day the doctor would come to put her down. So I was able to pick that time, but I was also able to know when her death would come. And I was grateful that it would be easier for her. She wouldn't have any more suffering. She didn't have any more prolonged symptoms of her dementia and her arthritis and her pancreatitis, right? She could be at peace. But I was also grateful to have a, I had the most beautiful last day with her. And, you know, the sun was shining that day, and she was in a good mood. And she was very sweet. And we had lots of cuddles and treats. And I was grateful for that. I was super grateful for the doctor. He could not have been nicer, and was so compassionate. And he even sent us a card uh, a year late on the year anniversary, he sent us a handwritten card in the mail. And it wasn't just, you know, thanks for using us. He wrote a long, he's long, like personal note about how he could see how loved she was and how much we cared for her. And, you know, it was an honor for him to be part of that moment. And those are the things I'm saying as a death doula all the time. But uh, I, there was a lot to be grateful for in those moments, even though I was still very devastated. Like I'm, almost choking up right now thinking about when he carried he bought the most beautiful little basket for her <laughs> and carried her out to his car so that we could he could take her to the cremation place and it was really hard to watch that and there were grateful moments too with my brother you know I his death was a little more sudden and less expected so I didn't know the last time I saw him that it would be the last time I saw him but I'm still grateful that the last time I saw him he was happy and he was having a great day. And he was starting to look better. His health looked like he was kind of on an upswing. And I'm very grateful for that. And also thinking about moments of you go out for a funeral and it's a hard day because this is, it feels permanent at that point. You're putting that person into their grave or their, or their cremation or whatever is happening. It feels very final. But maybe that day the sun's out. Maybe there's a beautiful landscape in the cemetery. There's like little tiny things to see. Maybe you got to see somebody you haven't seen in a decade who was there just to hold your hand that day. So finding those little moments of gratitude can be absolutely huge. Okay. And I know it's hard. I'm not going to say it's super easy and you have to force yourself to like, all right, I'm going to look around and find something pretty to look at. <laughs> That's not how it works. Something else to keep in mind is thinking about how your loved one that you recently lost would want you to feel. How, how would they like you to be holding yourself right now and holding your space? You know, I, 
there's part of me that says if I die, heck yeah, I want people to cry. <laughs> I met somebody at a death cafe recently who was like, I want people crying, falling to their knees and wailing because they just can't cope that I'm gone. And yes, that's flattering. But I would hope that my husband would not stop living his life if something happened to me. I would want him to be happy, even though I know it would be hard for him. But just think about that. If it's if this is a loss of somebody close to you, how would they want you to feel right now? Now, with all this, with these feelings of gratitude, I did mention there might be feelings of guilt. You might think to yourself that, I'm, you know, I, how, how dare I be happy, but just remind yourself, or if you want, I will remind you right now, you're not grateful for the loss itself or for the pain that comes with it. I'm not saying that you're grateful. Whatever you lost is gone. Okay. If you are, that's your business. (laughs) I'm not going to judge, but when you're feeling these feelings of gratitude, it's not necessarily you're grateful. The person is gone, but maybe you're grateful. They're not suffering anymore. Maybe you're grateful that they were in your life at all. That's a beautiful thing to be grateful for. That, hey, this person was in my life and they impacted me so much that I'm devastated they're gone. Back to finding gratitude in small situations. I spoke with somebody who is a new mom, brand new mom. And those of you who have children know that when you have a brand new baby in the house, you get to wake up all the time. You don't get to sleep a full night for a long time. And obviously that was really hard. Losing sleep for her was very difficult and it affected everything in her life. But she did tell me once, hey, I haven't got to watch the sunrise in years because I never wake up that early. And I got to hold my beautiful baby while breastfeeding and we watched the sunrise together. Like what a great little way to find something nice and something to be grateful for in probably (laughs) a very hard moment when you're just not sleeping and you're up with a crying baby who needs fed, right? But you've got to see the sunrise that day. So how can we practice gratitude every day? There's a lot of different ways to practice gratitude. Sometimes I hear a lot about gratitude journals. I mentioned that at the beginning. So let's talk about that. Gratitude journals are a way to take some time set aside every day to Think about something that either happened or something in your life that you are grateful for. And the studies on that have shown, and I don't have an exact study. I've just read so much of this in so many different places. And they're saying the studies say, so I'm just going to go out on faith that there really were studies on this. Forgive me for not looking for those. But there, there have been a lot of studies on how, well, I mentioned the one, how positive thinking can help affect you. But just taking some time every day to write it down, get your brain thinking about it. And if you just, and you, you can write it as a list. I, One of the gratitude journals I used to keep was just that. It was three bullet points. And I would just write out three things I was grateful for. The problem I had with this personally was I found myself writing, like especially if I had a really crap day, I had a hard time finding something to be grateful for. So it was just like, I'm grateful for my health, my family, my husband. And it seemed like there would be a week where those were the same three things I wrote every single damn day. (laughs) Okay. And that's, that's not really helping because you have to stretch yourself a little bit. Of course, I can be happy for my health every day. What else can I be grateful for today? Even if it was just the sun came out for a few minutes or it didn't get too hot today. (laughs) So finding those little moments of gratitude And just writing it out means you're specifically setting aside time to really think about it because putting it, taking that pen, getting out the notebook and physically writing it down, your brain is spending time. It's not just laying in bed being like, all right, the sun was out today. I didn't have a headache and my husband's great. That took about eight seconds for me to say that. So you're thinking about it for about eight seconds. Spend some more time on it. Right. That's why journaling is is great for a lot of things. I journal. I've been journaling for years. I've got a whole pile of them behind me that are all filled up. But taking that time to specifically handwrite stuff and you don't have to if you don't want to. There are apps out there. I've heard of at least five different apps where you can do gratitude journaling every day and rate your mood, things like that. Use one of those if you want to. But it's just the practice of setting aside five minutes Five minutes is doable. You can do that on your lunch break. You can do it. 
I like to do it at the end of the day so I can reflect on the whole day. You can do it in the morning. You can do it when you first wake up. What am I grateful for today? What happened yesterday that I'm grateful for? So just taking the time to write that down every day. Now, outside of that, what else can we do? Well, when you're having a particularly crap day, even if you're not sitting down at your journal, it's not your sit down journal time or sit down gratitude time, find one thing in that moment that you can be grateful for. Even if it's something as little as my shoes are comfortable. I'm telling you, that can go a long way, you guys. As someone with horrendous arthritis in her feet, comfortable shoes mean a big daggone deal. Uh, or, you know, something as simple as I have a nice office. Like you're at a job, you're getting hammered with deadlines, your boss is being a wiener. And you can say, you know what, though, I have this space, I have this office I can work in. I have a nice laptop, I don't know, just finding when you're in a real poop situation, finding one little nugget you can glimmer onto that is good can really change so much instead of and it's real easy if you're in that crap moment of everything's going wrong everything feels terrible to just focus on what else is terrible you know, I've, I've got all these deadlines my my father died last week I can't get out of these meetings my kids say my my cooking sucks my son's flunking out of school what else is wrong right now okay well I guess the dog hasn't been washed in a while and he smells bad it's easy to start picking out all the bad things when that's what you're focusing on. If you can start practicing every chance you get in a bad situation, finding that one glimmer of hope, it'll train your brain to see that all the time. It will. I promise. I struggle with this. I really do. And I'm not the most positive person every day, but there's hope, guys. I promise. Okay. And then when you feel those feelings of gratitude... Don't feel bad about it. You're allowed. I, I, Nikki the Death Doula of Columbus, Ohio, give you full and unlimited permission to be happy. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> now, without further ado, now that we're at the end of the episode, it is time for the Death Deck. Woo. All right. I'm shuffling it. And I really am doing it, you guys. I'm not just making this up. Okay. Oh, I love this question. I love all of them. Okay. Would you ever consider going, quote, old school and having a funeral at your home? A, nope, there's a reason that funeral homes were invented. B, yes, if the service involves an urn, no coffin. Or C, totally, sounds like a warmer, more personal goodbye. You know how I feel. I don't even have to answer it. It's absolutely C. I would love to do that. It's even a service I will be providing for my customers is to help with home funerals. And yeah, 100%. I'm all for it. A lot of people might find it's icky. That's okay. Well, I would like to hear what you think. Let me know. You can find me to tell me your thoughts on home funerals on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok all at Nikki the Death Doula. And you can reach out to me via my website too, NikkiTheDeathDoula.com. But most importantly, don't forget to follow me wherever you're listening right now. Be it Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music, not Stitcher, Stitcher's gone. Uh, wherever, Google, I don't know. Wherever you're listening, follow me. And please, for the love of Pete, leave a review. It's huge, you guys. If you haven't done that yet, it helps me out so much. The more reviews I get, preferably good ones, uh, the more people will find me. That's just how these stupid algorithms work these days, unfortunately. So you know what else you can do that would help me out a lot? You can come over, check me out on Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. That would be amazing, you guys. I would really appreciate it. I love to be providing more pro bono work, but in order to do that, I need your support. So check me out over on Patreon. You get access a week early to my podcast, ad free, and twice weekly grief affirmations. And hopefully I'll be having some Q&A sessions, some live chats, all sorts of great things available for my Patreons. All right. And then one last huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring my episode. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, totally online. 
pants. You don't have to wear pants for therapy anymore, you guys. You can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. And if you want to start, you just answer a few quick questions about your needs and preferences, and they'll match you up with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however is easiest for you. You can do it via text, you guys. Chat, video, phone call, whatever. And you can message your therapist at any time. Schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If for some reason you're not vibing on your therapist, you can switch to a new one at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you'll get the same professionalism and quality you would get from in-office therapy, but with a therapist that was custom-picked just for you. With more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. And guess what? You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Nikki the Death Doula. <laughs> That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Nikki the Death Doula. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an absolutely amazing, wonderful, happy, great week. And if you don't, that's okay. You're allowed. <laughs> All right. As always, your grief is yours. Your feelings are valid. And grief doesn't always have to suck. <laughs>